This is Namibia, one of the most beautiful countries in Africa, and in this video, I'm going to be exploring it. Namibia has always been on my travel list for a very long time, but I've never really had the chance to visit up until now. For me, it's one part of Africa that seems so far away that many Africans haven't really bothered to explore. What's one thing people need to know about Namibia? Firstly, very, very beautiful country. Number two, peaceful country, peaceful mm -hmm. and safe. In the next 10 days, I'm going to be traveling across Namibia in the hopes of ending up in the desert. A little known secret is that Namibia is home to the oldest desert in the world, which I've always wanted to visit. Since I had 10 days, I came up with a plan to spend three days each in different interesting parts of the country and finally end up at the oldest desert in the world. I had very limited resources, so I wanted to make sure this trip was as cheap as possible. So I set a budget of $1,000, which I was going to make sure not to go over. I started my journey from Cape Town, which is less than two hours away from Namibia if you are traveling by air. I would have loved to do a road trip though, but with a Nigerian passport, I don't think so. Landed in the capital city of Windhoek, and my reaction was, where is everybody? There are just 2.5 million people in the whole of Namibia. That's like one small part of Lagos. Namibia is one of the least populated countries in the world. Even though the land area is over 824,000 km square, which is almost the size of Nigeria at 900,000 plus km square, that's really small if you ask me. On entering the city, I could see a striking resemblance with some parts of South Africa. It was a German colony from 1884 to 1919, then recolonized by apartheid South Africa until 1990. It might surprise you to know that Namibia was formerly called South West Africa. We arrived in the capital city of Windhoek, which derives its name from the Afrikaans word Windhoek, which means wind corner. It wasn't really windy today though. My first place to stay was a tented camp I had booked online for $30 called Urban Camp. I knew I was going to be spending a while here, so I wanted to start this trip on a budget so I don't run out of money and have to trek back to my country. One of the things I noticed on arrival here was that there were lots of 4x4 Toyota trucks with tents on them. The trucks had almost everything you would need for an adventure or road trip. You had a fridge at the back for drinks, pumps for your tires, cooking equipment if you do decide to go camping and a lot more. Most people who come to Namibia come for tourism as it's the country's largest source of revenue. Seeing these vehicles made me realize I was missing something really important for this trip which was a way to move around. Also, on looking at the map, I realized that most of the locations I had planned on visiting were hundreds of kilometers from the city and driving all that distance alone was gonna be super boring. So I reached out to my friend Richard who lived in Cape Town and who was also a travel creator to come join me on this trip and he arrived the next day. I am super tired. If we're gonna drive all the way to the oldest desert in the world, we're gonna need to get a vehicle that could take us around. If we could get a vehicle, then we could explore the most amazing locations in Namibia and finally visit the oldest desert in the world, which has always been on my wish list. And hopefully you get to see later in this video, if and only if we succeed. I put out a post on IG the night before that I was in Namibia in hopes that a travel company will reach out to us for collaboration. The next morning, we got the biggest surprise ever. One of the biggest travel companies in Namibia called Gondwana Collections had reached out to us and was willing to help us plan our trip and also give us a brand new vehicle to move around. We couldn't believe our luck. God was on our side. This is our vehicle. It's my box in the back there. So 4x4 has a camping tent on top. It's like a new vehicle actually. I'm excited to see what the country holds. So won't you guys come along with me? So let's go. One of the great parts about visiting a new country is trying out the food. So I reached out to a new friend I just met online. Her name was Woven. Hi, Tayo's family. Welcome to Ventuk, Namibia. Yeah. And she is one of the biggest YouTubers, if not the biggest YouTuber in Namibia. So where are we going to currently? We're going to Katitora. She told me about the local spot in Vinduk 
called Sia's Kitchen where we could try out some of the best Namibian delicacies. With us here in Namibia, we are people's people. Mm -hmm. So when we eat, we eat as a group instead of not everyone on their own. So first things first, we must wash. Is that why you're rolling up your sleeves? Is it that serious? <laughs> oh, this is reflex. <laughs> You can't eat from the same yeah. plate with me because okay. I'll eat all the food and then you'll be very hungry. Challenge accepted. Oh, really? Are we challenging? Chal challenge okay. accepted. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. <laughs> Tayo versus Woven. Who's going to eat more accepted. food? Accepted. Nigeria for life. Let's go. So, this is. Ah, 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 ah. Set three, two, one. <laughs> I'm a hospitable person through and through. Yeah. And I cannot beat someone who's resisting us. Yeah. I mean, Yo, look at that. Right. <laughs> I, can, I just let you win. It's not that you won. As a Nigerian, I want to support my country. <laughs> Namibia is known to have one of the best beef in the world and also one of the few African countries to export beef internationally. Namibia exported over $52 million worth of meat during 2020. That's a really huge number. Guys, it was an awesome experience yeah. eating at Sal's Kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I noticed about Namibia is that they have so many amazing resort destinations scattered all over the city and our plan was to stay in as many as possible. They have to keep topping up just in case you know anything happens. You have to be sure that they have enough fuel. This is not a country you want to get stuck in because yeah. it's hot and Definitely. there's nothing for long distances. Definitely. The first place on our list was the Kalaari Anib, which was around three hours from Vinduk. The drive was mostly on a charred road. I'd heard that Namibia is the leading African country with the best and quality roads on the continent. And to be honest, they were in line. Stop by briefly on the road here to stretch our legs. Uh, I heard Namibia has one of the best roads in Africa, but now I'm seeing it for free. I don't think we've seen a single bottle. Interesting thing though is Namibia practices the right-handed driving system just like South Africa. After driving three hours, see, show them you have arrived. Kalahari Namib Gondwana collection. Welcome to Kalahari Anib Lodge. Oh, it's thank amazing. you. Thank you very much. It's an iced tea juice. Iced tea juice? Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, are you two cups for me? <laughs> I thought it was just like going to be a small lodge, but apparently, oh, there's even a pool there. Yeah, we have two pools. Oh, wow. Kalahai Anib was like a beautiful oasis in the middle of the desert. Because of its location, one of the activities to engage in here was the game drive, which brought us close to the animals in the safari. We'll be heading to the dune where you guys will see a lovely Namibian sunset. Namibia has some of the most amazing wildlife in any African country with animals like cheetahs, zebras, lions, elephants and many more. The national animal is the oryx, which can be seen on the country's coat of arms and can be found all over the countryside. After a long drive through the beautiful safari, we climbed up one of the highest red sand dunes to eat and experience the amazing sunset. Welcome to Namibia. How do you do it? Yeah. Like this. No, no, oh shit. Oh. Like this. Like this. Oh, like this. Yes, Namibia. I feel like I'm throwing gang signs. This is Namibia. If you can see, this is up north and this is into the Caprivi. So we are about here. This is more to the south. Mm. So the, the okay. west side is this side and this is more to the east side. Welcome to Namibia. <laughs> Check out the sunset. So beautiful. You can never go wrong with our Namibian Do beverages. you know this song? <laughs> Salute. In heaven there is no beer. Yeah. That That's is why we are drinking here. And when we come from here, your friends will be drinking your beer. Yeah. <laughs> so drink a beer now, guys. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good morning. Just woke up now and I'm about to grab breakfast. As you guys know, I love food, so I pick like one, two, three. I'm going to demolish all of this before we head out on the road and continue our journey. I have like one million bags on me. You ready? Yeah. We set off on the second leg of our trip to a place called Sosusvle. The drive took us about five plus hours on a mostly gravel road. One cool thing about road trips is that you keep stopping in different towns and in different areas to either buy supplies or buy fuel to top up. And currently we're in a town, I don't know where this is. Okay, it's called Mao Tahoe. I think this is our last bend before we leave the express and head on to the gravel road. We need to deflate our tires. Reducing our tire pressure made it soft so it could conform to the shape of the rocks, improving traction and grip. On our left and right were numerous beautiful rock formations and we also came across many animals. We saw a big ass Komodo dragon. It's very massive. Get up. You want to see some action? Ooh, there he goes. Driving to Sussusvle felt like we were taking a long drive through a safari. Even though the roads were gravel, the ride was really smooth and we were driving at 80 km per hour on this road. To be honest, I had a lot of doubt if we were going to make it to the desert because we still had a long way to go. Traveling for me is always filled with uncertainty, especially for a new location and you can never be too sure of what to expect. So Sosus Vle is a very popular spot in Namibia. It has some of the biggest and most beautiful sand dunes that form different patterns when hit by the sun from different angles. Inside Sosus Vle is a place called Dead Vle, which was home to the most famous salt pan in Namibia. To access it, we had to drive into the Namib Nokloft Park and pay a fee. The prices differ based on where you are from. Cheaper for Namibians and more expensive for tourists like me. The ride takes another 30 minutes plus along a third road before getting to the final destination, which was the ultimate test of our driving skills. We're trying to make sure we don't get stuck. Because if we get stuck, <laughs> we have to push the car. This place looks pretty incredible. I want to do like a hike all the way from here to the top of that one there. I'm about to run down this hill. Hopefully I don't break my neck. But before I go down, I want to tell you guys about the sponsor of today's video, which is Epidemic Sound. And that is where I get all my music from. Music is an important part of storytelling and Epidemic Sound provides me with restriction-free music to use on all my platforms without ever having to worry about it being taken down or muted. It doesn't matter whether you're a video creator on YouTube or if you create videos for clients, Epidemic Sound has a license to cover everything. The good thing about Epidemic Sound is that you can choose from a large array of music. You can even decide to divide the music into different sections. You can remove the beats, you can remove the drums. Epidemic Sound also allows allows you the ability to navigate through the website and easily search and filter to find the perfect track. Their platform is made with creators like me and you in mind so all their features allow you to save your time and easily find the perfect sound for whatever project you're working on. If you find a song you like but there is something missing, you can also click on find similar to get similar songs. Click the link in the description for a 30 day free trial. I'm going down this ah. Go on. Seeing Dead Flay for the first time was one of the most surreal sights ever. There were so many trees that were dead but still standing and it was eerily quiet. Tayo! He's made it. <laughs> It was formed some years back when the river flooded this area which led to the growth of these trees. However, the climate changed and the sand dunes encroached on this area blocking the river from reaching the trees which led to them dying. They are dead trees but they are still it's like they are still standing there and they have been standing like this for hundreds of years. So lots of people come here to come and experience it and trust me, this is one of the most breathtaking places I've ever seen.
The best time to really experience that flay was early in the morning, especially if you want to climb the dunes because it gets really hot in the afternoon. One of the great parts that I love about exploring Africa is that the more you explore, the more you get to see places that you never knew existed. Like this is one of them. I never knew this actually existed. It's so remarkable, man. It's so remarkable. Our rest stop for the night was tucked deeply in a conservatory area owned by Gondwana Lodges who had helped us plan our trip. They own over 47 lodges across Namibia and be sure to check them out if you ever plan on visiting. This is a lodge called the Desert Star Dune Lodge. This is one of the most beautiful hotels or beautiful lodges I've had to stay in. Guys, just check this out. The sun is setting. It took us four hours to get here and trust me, the view is worth it. In total, they have nine rooms, and then there's a big restaurant that is overlooking the Kalahari. I always wonder why people actually have to leave Africa and say they are going to Dubai when they can just come to Namibia. Everything you want to get in Dubai, you can get it in Namibia. You can get it cheaper, and then if you're African, you're also in Africa, and then your money spreads around Africa. I want to enjoy the sunset, I want to enjoy it and experience it, but before it fully sets, let me show you guys what a room here looks like. I've never seen landscapes quite like this in my life. Okay. You know what to expect, but it's beautiful. That sunset. The best thing about staying here is this bed. Let me show you what you can do. They had a one-of-a-kind experience where you could pull your bed out of the cabin and lie under the stars at night. This was the first time I ever saw the Milky Way. Spending the night here made me wish I came with my babe and didn't have to spend the night watching the stars beside Richard. So don't make the same mistake I did. For those that have women, for those that have boo or bae in their life, you can cuddle up here at night and there are blankets that you can actually sleep in. There's also no Wi-Fi or cell signal here because they really want you to disconnect. So get ready for a social media detox. The great thing I loved about this location was how remote it was. It gave you the feeling that you were truly alone and the landscapes and views from the room were truly remarkable. We had dinner while watching the sun set beautifully over the horizon. I know I have used beautiful a lot in this video but it's just because everything is really beautiful here. Yeah, sorry. We also visited another hotel in this collection which was called Desert Grace and it had a totally different vibe than the first one. This one had a private outdoor pool and was also a great place to stay if you were coming with your partner or family. After experiencing so much of the desert, we set our sights on a coastal town called Swakopmund. Guys, we are officially in the desert now. No trees, no nothing. Everything is just empty flatland. And we still have another 96 kilometers. Our drive from Sosuzvle to Swakopmund was going to take us about 4 to 5 hours, so we had to refuel multiple times. Driving long distances with a 4x4 leads to a heavy fuel intake. The diesel in Namibia cost around 24 Namibian dollars per liter, which was a small price to pay if you don't want to get stuck in the desert. Because Namibia is so big, there were moments where we drove for 20 to 30 minutes without coming across a single vehicle. Also, your car has to be in tip-top shape because breaking down here is not even something I would wish on my enemy. The great part about the tented 4x4 though was that worst case scenario, we sleep on the roof. But I prefer the beautiful lodges. So guys, we made it to the Tropic of Capricorn. We actually don't know what it means, but I know I've heard about it before. <laughs> we drove past one of the most amazing sights ever. A pink lake that was home to the beautiful flying birds called the flamingos. The first time I ever saw a flamingo was in Tanzania, but they were in small numbers. The flamingos in Namibia were in the hundreds of thousands and they stretched further than my eyes could see. Because they feed on algae and shrimp, their body metabolizes the pigment which turns its feather pink. They also sleep on one leg, which is ridiculous to me. Why would you sleep on one leg? driving into Swakopmund. I just can't wait to get there because I need to relax. I've been driving for the past four minutes. <laughs> <laughs>
Finally arrived Swakopmund, a coastal city which was a sharp contrast to our whole trip through the desert. Namibia has over 1,500 kilometers of coastline. Swakopmund is also the biggest coastal town and most Namibians visit here for holiday. And this is my first time walking on the streets. It looks very similar to South Africa, very similar to Cape Town actually and also the temperature too also feels like I'm actually in Cape Town. Along the ocean front were many amazing real estate properties that were mostly used for hotels, Airbnbs and vacation homes. The average price of a townhouse here was around $100,000. One of the most prominent sites in the city is the Swakopmund Lighthouse and the Mole, an old seawall. We're currently at this place called Strand Hotel. What do you think of what you're seeing for the first time? We've been stuck in the desert for a few days now and this is quite refreshing. And I little linked up with the guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow's gonna be epic. Though, yeah, sure. it's gonna be epic. Yeah. You're gonna, Let's go have some. You're gonna show me how you guys do it here, right? <laughs> yeah, no, for tonight, definitely. <laughs> okay. We're gonna start off very easy, but okay. we still got an early morning, so I hope okay. you're a strong soldier, eh? <laughs> We're strong in Nigeria, don't worry, I'm good. <laughs> Our spot for the night was the Delight Hotel, which was a five minute walk from the waterfront. Ooh, okay. okay. What's this called? Onyama. Onyama. I can't describe it. It's, it's just marvelous. Yes. <laughs> The next day, we headed out to meet a tour company called Sandwich Stores. Riding on the sand here, you need to be skilled. Either you're skilled so that you don't get stuck or you just get a tour company, which is what we did. And we linked up with this guy and he's going to take us all the way to Sandwich Harbour. All right, guys, uh, this is the part where we're going to go off road now. So we're just going to basically um, switch off the car's traction control because that's one of the procedures that we do. Mm. The traction control has to be off and then we're going to engage into H4, which is your normal 4x4. Uh, as I always tell my clients, uh, this is the part where we say we're going to have some African massages <laughs> all the way. Uh, it's courtesy, it's free of charge. You didn't charge that. All right, cool. Let's go. <laughs> I had seen numerous videos of the desert hitting the ocean, but I haven't had a chance to experience it fully for myself until now. This is the only place in the world for hundreds and hundreds of kilometers where the world's oldest desert, the Namib Desert and the Atlantic Ocean meet. This is the oldest desert in the world and has one of the highest dunes in the world. The Namib Desert is the oldest desert in the world and it has endured for 55 to 80 million years and it extends for over 1,900 kilometers along the Atlantic coast of Africa to Angola then southwards across Namibia to the Western Cape province of South Africa. You can see the dunes here and on this side is the ocean. <laughs> Guys, can you imagine the ocean and the desert meeting each other? The best way to come here is with an experienced tour company who is familiar with the routes because driving here needs the highest skill level. Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> god really created this earth like... I think it's one of the most unique landscapes I've ever seen. God did. I'm Namibian and I've never been here. Are you serious? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> let's go, let's go! You are running like a gazelle. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Ooh. Also, the time of the day matters because during high tide, this road we're driving on will be totally submerged by the sea. We drove all the way up to the highest dune in Namibia and this was the best fun I've had in a while. Up next, lunch. Hey, 
Thank yes. you. Yes. 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 Got the sandwich over in Namibia. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. God did. <laughs> if I posted a picture online, you'd be like, where in the world are you? Well, yeah, I'm in Namibia. Cheers. <laughs> Visiting Namibia really changed my mind about what this beautiful African country really had to offer. I never really expected to live feeling so mind blown. The country is so big that you need probably two months or more to really experience it fully because all parts have something to offer and I am definitely coming back. This is one of the reasons I love traveling. It helps shape your perception of the world and sometimes it blows your expectations. You look at Namibia's economy, uh, the top four sectors mm. of Namibia's economy will be your mining, mm -hmm. fishing, okay. farming, mm. then tourism. Oh, so wow. farming is big in Namibia. Mm. I thoroughly enjoyed my stay in Namibia and I can say Namibians are one of the most hospitable people I have ever met in any African country. The day I arrived here, my drone stopped working and just from posting on Instagram, a stranger was willing to lend me his to take most of the shots you saw in this video and we are now friends. The most important thing about travel for me isn't just the location but the amazing people you get to meet along the way and I did meet many Namibians. Shout out to Gondwana Lodges for sponsoring all our accommodation and our logistics for this trip. <laughs> if you're coming to Namibia, definitely check out the link in the description below to reach out to Gondwana and tell them Ty and Richard sent you and tell them you want this same experience. I once read somewhere that strangers are just friends that you haven't met yet. So will I recommend Namibia 100%? It's such a cocktail of amazing activities and experiences that I believe everyone in the world should try out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. See you guys on the next one. <laughs> 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 <laughs>